Let's talk about some deep stuff, shall we? A scientist spent 100 days below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. Dr. Joseph Duturi, or Dr. Deep Sea as he likes to call himself, was living underwater as part of Project Neptune 100. After 74 days of the mission, he officially set a new Guinness World Record for the longest time living in an underwater fixed habitat. But he didn't leave the experiment and stayed the plan 14 weeks. You can test yourself and stay in the exact same place where Duturi lived. It's called Jules Undersea Lodge, after Jules Verne, author of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The idea of Project Neptune 100 is to study how pressure affects humans, both physiologically and psychologically. Dr. Deep Sea, who is a biomedical engineer and associate professor at the University of South Florida, stayed so long underwater to see if increased pressure can help humans live longer and prevent health problems that come with old age. From day one of the mission, Duturi actively shared what was going on on social media. He mentioned that another important goal for him was to inspire scientists from different generations to study life undersea. It was quite different from living on a submarine. Subs are sealed when they go underwater and have sea level pressure. So people on it don't feel an enormous difference in pressure, even deep down. Duturi's underwater home didn't have any solid hatches or airlocks between the ocean and the living space. It was like a glass of water turned upside down and pushed into a sink full of water. There was still a pocket of air at the top of the living space and a pool of water on the floor of one room coming from the ocean. So the air inside the lodge was squeezed by the ocean's weight and was about twice higher than on land. There isn't much research on what happens when we're exposed to hyperbaric pressure for a long time. There's only some data from submariners. Even after just two months under the sea, they had disturbed sleep patterns and problems with the levels of certain hormones that had to do with sleep. They also lost bone and muscle mass. Our bodies are built for sea level conditions. But as pressure mounts, hydrogen sneaks into our bloodstream, causing chaos. Between 30 and 100 feet down, you might feel some euphoria, but dive deeper and you'll feel like you've hit the bar too hard. Scientists think it has something to do with messed up signals between neurons in our brains. Luckily for Duturi, he was only staying 30 feet deep, so it wasn't an issue. Still, he only got half the amount of sunlight we're used to on land and not nearly the same amount of vitamin C. During the 100 days of the experiment, the scientists collected data, collaborated with other researchers, virtually taught a biomedical engineering course at his university, and reached out to thousands of students from different countries online. He stayed in the two-bedroom apartment 30 feet below the surface of a lagoon in Key Largo, Florida. It's attached to the seabed by leg structures. There are three windows with a direct ocean view and some marine life outside. There's a command center that keeps oxygen, water, and power levels under control. An AC keeps the temperature comfortable, and a chef dives in to cook meals for whoever stays inside. When he was done with his mission, Dr. Duturi got back on the surface. His family and friends, the media, and many fans who were following his work online were waiting for him. He's now 55 years old, and he claims that living underwater has made him feel 10 years younger. The doctors who greeted him and the results of the tests they ran on him have demonstrated the anti-aging effect. Dr. Deep Sea noticed some improvement in his sleep and metabolism. He also noted that his body had shrunk by a half an inch. He doesn't plan to stop his studies of how isolated environments affect humans. He's going to take a flight on a modified airliner where you can experience zero gravity multiple times. It's the next step to his dream of becoming a civilian astronaut and traveling into space by 2026. Meanwhile, Tim Yarrow in South Africa went even further and spent an impressive 10 days in the water, inside a tank at a shopping mall. He broke a world record, but his goal was just to find out what would happen to him. At the end of the experiment, his hands looked absolutely terrible. People who helped him fed Yarrow through a tube, and all his waste went out of the tank through a different tube. Good thing. Tim managed to survive the experiment, but he said he wouldn't like to do it again. Tim, a British biologist, explained that if he had stayed underwater longer, his skin would have broken down and he would have gotten seriously ill. Luckily for Yarrow, his hands went back to normal after a while, and he didn't get any permanent injuries from this weird experience. 
Now, if you're looking for more comfortable accommodations under the sea, you might want to stay at the world's first and most expensive underwater hotel in the Maldives. Guests of the Maraca Hotel wake up surrounded by the Indian Ocean with bright coral reefs and exotic marine life. This luxurious suite was designed by top architects from New York and the Maldives. It's a two-story construction with an upper level that has spacious bedrooms, a sun deck, and an infinity pool. The lower level is submerged over 16 feet below sea level. Guests of the Maraca get the royal treatment, which includes private butler and chef services, complimentary jet skis, on-call massage and spa treatments, and cooking dishes with chefs. But before you start packing to the Maldives for your unique underwater experience, you must know it all costs almost 14000 bucks per night. Now, one of the most exciting things humans have ever found underwater is the Yanaguni Monument off the coast of Japan. This structure is the closest we've ever been to finding Atlantis, and still one of the world's biggest mysteries. In 1986, a diver was looking for hammerhead sharks not far away from Yanagumi Island. He noticed a huge, unusual structure in the shallow water that resembled a pyramid with multiple steps or layers leading to the top with clear symmetrical edges, angles, and even steps. As it turned out later, it was made of shale and sandstone 20 million years old. No one knows how the construction got there in the first place, but one researcher is sure that humans built it 10,000 years ago and was part of the lost continent of Mu. This mythical continent, something like the Atlantis of the Pacific, was destroyed by a huge earthquake or hurricane and went under the sea. Its survivors moved across the Earth and found civilizations, including the ancient Egyptians and Maya. Academics often say this theory is nothing but a fairy tale. But the scientist who proposed it says only humans could have carved such straight lines, sharp corners, steps, avenues, and even statues that look like animals. Since earthquakes happen so often in Japan, the construction could have gone from the ground into the sea. The more widely accepted theory is that the monument is a work of nature. It explains the amazing symmetry with well-defined parallel bedding planes along which the layers easily separate. You can find similar 90-degree angles occurring in sandstone when erosion takes place. The area's naturally strong currents could also have shaped it. It's possible that over thousands of years, major tectonic activity could have fractured the sandstone into geometric patterns. During the Miocene period, tectonic activity collected vast amounts of sandstone in the area. Geologists think the monument could be part of a much larger underlying rock from this event. And earthquakes that often happen here have shaped the rocks into what they look like now. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.